So Luis, thanks for joining me today. No, thank you uh, for the invitation. You're so welcome. Um, just for people who might be watching this video, Luis and I met on Twitter, as uh, people do. And um, this is the second video in a series that I'm just calling Conversations, where I'm just chatting with people about things that matter to them, things that are important to them. Um, the purpose of that, of course, is because the corporate propaganda mills, as I call them, do not share stories of real people and experiences of real people. They only serve the billionaire class and they screw over just regular everyday people. That's, of course, my political take on it. But then also, I just think that like chatting with people, it, I don't know, it just does something. So um, so thanks, Luis, for, for chatting with me today. Thank you. And, um, you know, I'll just jump right in. I noticed on your Twitter profile a few things, um, but I don't want that to guide the conversation at all because I just want this to be open for you to share what, whatever and for us to just talk about whatever. But, you know, just tell us a little bit first about, or if you tell me about like where you're from, like where do you live right now? Uh, what things are like in your world at the moment? Of course, that, of that course. Kind of stuff. So I'm gonna start where, where, I'm, where I am from. I'm from Puerto Rico. I'm a Puerto Rican guy. Uh, I came to the United States in 2010. I was uh, like a regular, you know, working class citizen, I'm a regular working class citizen. I, I lost my job over there. Uh, I seek for a better opportunity in the mainland, in the mainland, because, you know, as you know, Puerto Rico, we're a uh, territory of the United States and we can vote over there for the president and stuff like that. I say, you know, I need to make a change. Then let me go back to the mainland, you know, to the mainland, uh, try to make some changes. I'm a father. I have four kids, you know, I've been through a lot. Uh, as everybody else, I've, uh, I trusted the, the American dream of going to college, getting an education, you know, degree. You're gonna, you know, go up in, in, in ranks. You're gonna be making a lot of money, you know. So I buy that dream. I went to college. Guess what? Now I have $85,000 in student debt, $85,000. I'm a little bit lucky because I went to a for-profit university and that for-profit university got caught in uh, scamming students. You know, they, they were caught lying to students that they were gonna, they, they were guaranteed that they're gonna get a job, high in paying job, all that stuff. And they get sued. They got into a class action lawsuit and they lost. Was that and Trump University? No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I think that one didn't even last than a year. <laughs> well, I mean, it might as well be anymore. I have $200,000 in student loan debt, so I know the pain on that front. I'm just like, yeah. what is the point of any of this anymore? And, so. and the problem is, the, oh, the good thing is, since that uh, class action lawsuit, they, you know, the students won again that class, class action lawsuit. I'm part of that year that class action lawsuit happened. Mm. So I was one of the guys that got, you know, like we can say like, misled by the university. So I went to a law firm. I needed to pay a law firm in order to get this. Even, even though they lost, you know, against the students, I still need to pay to try to get this thing settled up, you know, mm -hmm. like try to get this thing fixed for me. So they still go into the process of that. If I win this case, my student loans are gonna be forgiven. You know, they're gonna be gone. And I'm going to be able to buy my home because right now I'm renting. You know, I'm like every other citizen. I'm renting. Yep. You know, I want to have my home for my family, for my kids. I want to mm -hmm. have the American dream, you know. But, you know, it's not easy. Over here, it's not easy. They, people think, that, oh, you're, you're, you're in the United States. You can make money over there. They, you know, it's easy. <laughs> With the pandemic, really? Seriously? Oh, my God. You know, things are not that easy. And that's one of my problems. Medical bills is another problem. You know, when, when my little baby was born, guess what? C-section. How much is a C-section over here in the United States? I still have bills coming for that. Yeah. And I have an insurance, even though it's not the best of insurance, because now they have this tier thing that you need to, you will need to get the premium insurance or the medium insurance. You know, I yes. can do either one of them. It's like- where, where do you live right now? I'm in Illinois. I'm in, in Illinois. Illinois. I'm very close okay. to Indiana. I'm a, a neighbor of Indiana. So okay. I see the differences between the states. Yeah. What's the difference between the two states there? Well, Indiana, as you know, is a conservative state. Over here, you know, they're, they're very, very pro. They were very pro-Trump. You know, even though over there I went to meetings, Bernie meetings over there in Indiana, a lot of people were, you know, in favor of Bernie. Even Republicans 
mm. went to the Bernie meetings. You know, they really trusted this guy. And the corporate yeah. media, I mean, I hate what they did to Bernie. I really hate it. I hate, I hate what the DNC did to Bernie. Uh, that's why I say, hey, listen, I'm done with, with the DNC. I'm done voting Democrat. I'm done. But over here in Indiana, the prices are very low. Uh, the taxes for the homes are very low. Unlike Illinois, in Illinois, the, the taxes over here, the property, property taxes over here are like, oh, man, you can't buy a home over here. Yeah. Every year you need to spend $8,000, $10,000 for taxes, only for taxes. I can't even imagine that as a poor person. Like, I, I, I've seen that and I just don't understand. You know, I, I've thought this throughout my life. Like, how do people afford these things? I mean, I, I've been a teacher and an artist. And of course, no one, this society could care less about people like me doing those types of careers. I, I just, I can't even wrap my head around how your tax bill could be as much or more than I pay in rent or have paid yeah. in rent, you know? Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't make it doesn't sense. Doesn't make any sense. Like, where do, what kind of jobs are those that a lot of people don't that? They don't want the people to migrate, you know, to get out of the Illinois, but you know, how are we gonna live over here? Yeah, totally, totally. Hey, and like you, I used to work in the, in the school system. I used to be a teacher assistant for 10 years. I worked with special ed education kids, you know? And yeah. I struggled, I yep. struggled because as a teacher, you don't get the benefits of social security. You know, they, they don't take out social security from you. They don't take out, uh, there's a lot of stuff that go on when, when, when you're a teacher. Mm -hmm. And as a teacher assistant, even less, you get paid like a regular employee. You don't get paid that much. You know, teachers get paid most of the time they studying 35 to 60,000, right? Mm. A teacher assistant don't get paid that much. No. And we have almost the same responsibilities as a teacher. And then when the tax returns come, the time for, for the tax, for filling taxes, you don't get almost nothing in return. On the contrary, you might need to pay. You know, and that's a big struggle over here. Right now. Ask, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, because I, I was going to, I wanted to go back because I, I, I felt like I cut you off earlier when you were talking about um, your, your kids and like medical bills and stuff and like C-section medical bills. How much... Well, I have a few questions I'm thinking of like right now, yeah, but I'm curious, like what is, what is the cost for a C-section these days? It's just Approximately $24,000. $124,000? $24,000. $24,000. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not covered by, there's no... It, it is covered by the insurance. If you have an insurance, you know, job related, because you know, insurance over here is attached to the job, yeah, yeah, which should course. not be. That's why I'm for Medicare for all. Yeah, I don't yeah. think as the, the richest country in the world, why are we having this archaic, uh, you know, system that you need to rely on your job to get insurance? It doesn't make sense. So the insurance did pay, but I got stuck for, um, with almost $4,000 because we apply for, it's like a grant that you get, yeah. you know, that some organizations yeah. when you're low, uh, when, when you're low wage or low wage person, you know, some organizations help you with that. Yes. I've but it should not be that way. Yes. What about people that can't pay? You know, why, what if the, the, the wife, the lady needs to get the C-section? You can't pay for that C-section. Well, it's humiliating too. I've had that happen with hospital visits. I've had health, I've not had health coverage, whatever you want to call it. I have not had it more than I have had it in my adult life. I'm in my mid forties now. And the times that I've had to go to the emergency room or whatever, and you know, all that grant paperwork and bullshit, I'm just like, what the hell? And it's degrading, you know? I find it, it's just very degrading. And and I currently don't have health insurance during this pandemic. It's just crazy. And then you get the, you get the premiums going up. The co-pays yeah. going uh -huh. up. Yes. You get bills from stuff that you were, you're like, what is this? Why am I getting bill, a bill from this when I just went to the, you know, all the specialists in that room, they want to get paid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, the specialists. That's the part that it got me the first time it happened, probably in my 20s, where I was like, I had no idea that there were like these doctor, uh, you know, it, it's like the, the emergency room physicians group and they get their cut and then the radiologist. I was just like, I, as, a, as a person growing up without, you know, of course, my parents were dealing with that, but I had no idea. Well, actually they weren't because we had health insurance growing up. My, my parents, mm -hmm. you know, there's always, there was, and it's interesting to see how the system has deteriorated because- yeah. I've seen like my first few jobs had kind of health insurance and then boom, 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 boom. But Listen, like just... I'm, I'm in my forties and I remember when my parents used to be, you know, working 
their insurance was like something premium, like what like just one insurance, not this tier thing that you know, high paying, medium. No, no, none of that. It was just one insurance and it will cover everything. Yeah, everything. You almost did, you only needed to pay like twenty dollars of the doctor. That's it. Yeah. But now what is happening, you know, and then, then the CEOs of these organizations, you know, like Blue Cross Blue Shield, Cigna, you see their profiles, they're making billions, you know, why? Why, why need, needs to be like this? You know, why we need to pay with our health, with our health problems, why we need to make them rich? It's really why sick because we're like literally, they're lit we're, it's, our lives are literally, it's almost like the Matrix, you know? Remember the Matrix yeah, movie? Yeah. Like, they're like we're in us. these, they're like sucking the energy out of us. Literally, they're sucking the life out of us. That is a good way of putting it. Yeah, I agree with you. you know? I love those movies. So yeah, I know what you mean. I rewatched it this past year, the first one. <laughs> Just like, you know, I saw people posting about it. And I was like, eh, let me rewatch it. And it was funny because there's so much of it that, because I hadn't seen it forever that I forgot. And something and clicked with you, right? It really clicked. Yeah. And, and and then, of course, there are some cheesy moments of it that I'm like, oh, that's so 90s, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, you know. But, like, those things, I feel like sometimes these films are actually just preparing us for the demise, you know? Yeah. Because this it, is where we're at now with, it, with that. Including cartoons. Look at The Simpsons. Yeah. Yeah. From totally. The Simpsons. Hello. Yes. You know, it, it was just crazy. The Simpsons have been, you know, nailing it a couple of years, you know? Yes. With crazy stuff i'm like oh my god what is happening what is happening to the united states you know we used to be a really good country that that cared for the people you know we we used to have middle class real middle class yeah now we don't have middle class what is the middle class over here supposedly middle class for for being a middle class you need to be seventy five thousand or something like that or more which is i mean even that and as a poor person that's never even <laughs> seen that i just with the cost of living well because what ends up happening is too then you end up buying more crap and having to pose as something because then you're in that class of people that has to have a more of an exterior in order to maintain yeah. that like facade of hierarchy yeah and yeah. i've seen people in that group um who just you know that that messes with your mind yeah it does in it a does. way that just is like and listen I, I i can't get into that salary you know into that that pay rate you know if i have three jobs right Three and you're jobs. burning yourself out, yeah. Yeah, yeah and totally. then your your health is going to deteriorate, and then you have this crappy insurance that is going to make you pay. So you're you're working for what? Exactly. For paying bills. Exactly. You know, it's not worth it. It's not what, worth what it. type of work do you do or prefer to do? Right now, I work in a hospital. I'm part oh, of wow. the first responders. You know, in a hospital, even though I don't deal with patients directly. Okay. You know, I mean, I'm one of the personnel in the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, at the hospital, I've seen all the uh, struggle of the people, you know, the people that can't pay bills, people that get frustrated. I've seen patients running out of the ER with their oh. IV oh. attached because they're afraid of the bills. Jesus. I got people fighting with the ambulance personnel because they don't want the ambulance to charge them $1,000 for taking them to the hospital. $1,000. How, how is this possible that the city of Chicago but that's where I work in Chicago, mm -hmm. even though I don't live in Chicago, I live a little bit further. Uh, how come the city of Chicago is making people pay for the ambulance, which is part of the firefighter department? Mm -hmm. Isn't the firefighter department, you know, funded by taxpayers? Yeah. So I don't understand what is happening over there. You know, I guess maybe they were abusing the system. And this is our way of trying to make them stop abusing the system. Well, like Isn't everything is privatized now. So that's like the DR, the ER doctor thing I was saying, where it's like you go to a thing that you think is a thing to take care of you. And like everyone's got their own little pocket of control within that. And they're all going to get their piece, you know? And what is funny about this is uh, the first thing when you go to a hospital, the first thing that they ask you, your insurance. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. aren't you helping this person first with his health problems why are you making sure he wants to pay or he can't pay you know that is wrong that, that is, is wrong that's interesting that you say it like that because that i'm thinking of my own personal experience within that where it's almost as if yeah before they'll even touch you they want to know what they can get for, and that's 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 insane that's wrong that's wrong it should not be that way there yeah. should be you know some sort of organizational 
government agency that if you can't pay, they will, you know, help you out trying to pay those bills. You Just know, takes care of. Yeah. yeah. You know, that, that will help out with people that don't want Medicare for all because the scary government is going to be in charge of the health insurance. Wow. 49 countries in the world has this system or, or a similar system. Well, it'll save us tons doing of money. Great. It'll save us tons of money. Yeah, they're doing great. And I think the part that people don't realize with Medicare for all too is like about preventative care and public health initiatives that prevent. Hey, hello. This this is the thing. I have situations, you know, health situations that I feel like, oh, I should go to the doctor. Yeah, me this, too. You know? And then, am I really gonna go to the hospital with, to the doctor and get a bill at home? You know, I need to pay when I need to pay food for my kids over here, yeah. clothing for my kids. I need yep. to pay the rent. I need to pay the light bill, you know, all those bills. And I'm going to add another bill because I have a little problem. To, you know, it might be a little problem right now, but I don't know if that problem is going to become more something bigger in the future that exactly. is going to even bring a, a bigger bill to my home. I don't know, but I, right. I can't afford it. I can't afford it. So what's, so what do you do then? How are our, what, like, how are you surviving with your, your family? Well, I mean, let me tell you, guys, you, how are you making I, it happen? When I was a teacher assistant, my salary was bare minimum to keep all my bills in check. You know, if something spectacular happened, I, I was not able to pay bills. Yeah. But I was, I was coping with it right now because my salary is way lower than what I used to do when I was a teacher assistant. I'm getting, you know, help from the government. Mm -hmm. And so the government is subsidizing me. You know, the government is helping me with uh, the link, you know, the, the you know, uh, food stamps. I'm getting food stamps. I'm getting a little bit of help for my kids. If my kids get sick, I have Medicaid, which is similar to Medicare for all, you know, something similar for poor people. Right. So my salary went down from $40,000. I'm all the way down to less than $30,000. You? And you work in a hospital. Yeah, and I work in a hospital. And I, right. I, I'm, I'm exposing my health. I'm exposing, yeah. you know, coming over here with COVID-19 and bringing it to my kids. Yeah. But that's that's something I need to do. It's not that I want to. It's no, that no I need does. to. Yeah. And I have a bachelor's degree. Oh, go study in the university and you're going to have a blah, 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 blah job. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> hey. You know how many job interviews I went when I, I graduated from, from the university? I went to a couple of your interviews, even though I have all the qualifications yeah. to yeah. get that job, right? My experience with computers, my experience with programming, all that stuff. You know why I didn't get hired? Because I'm in the 40s. Oh, yeah. And they, they want yeah. a hot shot. They want somebody that is in the 20s, you know, that is nice looking, that, you know, all that stuff. And I'm like, you know, I'm tired of this. Yeah, but Luis, I think you just didn't, you're just not working hard enough. You just didn't, yeah, you just didn't want it. <laughs> yeah, where right now, oh, this is, this is another, this is another situation why I have, why, why I'm getting subsidized by the government. Even working in the hospital, I used to have two jobs. Another one as a security guard, I was most of the time in concerts. I attended the Ariana Grande concert over here in Chicago, you know, Northwestern University games, that type of security job. So I'm, I'm working eight hours or more in the hospital. Plus, I was working eight hours more in this other job. Yeah. And sometimes I needed a third job yeah. or part-time, like Uber, Uber Eats, you know, stuff like that to, to get my money. But I decided, hey, I'm going to stop all this because this is affecting my lifestyle. Yeah. I'm going crazy. I'm, I'm tired. I have, you know, my eyes are like this, you know. I'm tired. I can't deal with this no more. So I, when we decided, me and my wife, because she lost her job too as a, as a cleaning crew. What I decided is, hey, we're gonna get government health system. I, we can't deal with this no more. Forget about that. I wanna, I wanna try to have a better life, you know, for me, for my kids, and that's why I apply for, you know, that type of subsidies from the government because I can't deal with yeah. it. No more. I can't. Yeah, hundred percent. And now with the COVID nineteen, who is going to concerts? Yeah, there goes Nobody's that job. Going to concerts? There's no concerts. No they, concerts. And they're saying that for twenty until twenty twenty two. Yeah, there's not gonna be concerts. Yep. No, and that ain't gonna help. It. And so, by that point, we'll be so devastated. Who's gonna be able to afford to go to a concert? Correct. Honestly, correct. Yeah. it's there's always people that got money from all this stuff. You know, well, there's there's people who have done quite well in this, and yeah. unfortunately, a lot of those people. Uh, hell, should have... <clears throat> I'll be honestly, a lot of those people are people that do things that are actually destructive to our society. I mean, that's the, the part. Trolls? 
And that's the part that really bothers me with this system is that people who are like, I'm doing great. I'm like, yeah, but look what you do for a living. Do you really, I mean, this, I mean, it's not a hit against them as people, you know, people got to work, they got to survive, but like, that's a lot of what has happened, you know, or what they're doing is shuffling papers that isn't really actually helping anyone. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I agree Um, with that. I totally agree with it. And you you can't tell that to those people because then they, they freak out and they think that, you know, the, the joke I made just a minute ago, they're like, well, you're just not trying hard enough. It's like, okay, yeah, all right, sure. Yeah, That's right. exactly what we're going truth. through. We know the like, truth behind they him. know it, you know, and, and it makes me angry. And at the same time, like, I know that, you know, to get out of this space, you know, like, I'm having a hard time of trying to figure out how to, how to communicate with those people who, you know, are whether they're in my life or just people in society when you come in contact with them in a way that really gets them to understand that this whole myth of like meritocracy has to just go away. Like you just have to put it away and say, we all deserve basic shit. Like everyone deserves to have a decent life period. And it doesn't need to come from destroying the planet and bombing countries. Like that's it's look, just like, can we just all agree to that and then see where that takes us? You know, look what happened right now with that Chevron spill over there in the, in the, in the, in the coast. I know. You know. We told you so. We told you it so. It was going to happen. We it's told you so. Us. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, my God, that, you know, I, think... way, I realized that a way of you getting people engaged that don't want to talk politics, get like a very nice video that has your points. Like, you know, I have jokes about your points and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, that helps a lot. Yeah. Because people are like jokes. Yes. And we have, you have a very funny video. They will watch it and they will say, wow, that's true. This is happening, blah, blah, blah. You know, and that's how you get them engaged. That's well, the way. So what do you do from that, Doug? So because you get, you, have, you hook people into engagement, but then how do you get people to get moving and do stuff, you know, and well, start getting you, active? You keep talking about the topics because what I notice is if you talk to somebody right now about some topic about the politics and stuff like that, they will listen to you. Yeah. But if you stop, as soon as you stop, that conversation is gone yeah so what you do the next day you continue the conversation with something a little bit different hmm. don't start talking about the same topic mm-hmm. talk about something else that happened look at the chevron spill right now right. talk about that hey do you see what happened over there right these people have been i've been you know talking about this for years nobody's paying attention what if your kids are gonna get drinking water with you know that those chemicals in the water what do you think is gonna happen look what happened in flint michigan that thanks yeah. to status quo, which is a uh, independent media, you know, from Jordan, I think is the guy that, yeah. that, yeah. that runs yeah. it. No, he don't cover a lot of stuff going on over there. He got the government, the next governor over there in, in trouble right now. And that's an independent media. Where is the corporate media talking about this? Well, where, they where don't is, serve that interest. Nothing? That's the whole point. Yeah. Uh, of course. Of course. You know, yeah. that's a big problem. So. When that happens, when you're talking about, about this, then you say, you see how the corporate media is not doing nothing, it's not telling you, you know, it's exposing you to those chemicals and you don't even know your kids, you know, talk about their kids, talk about, you know, the problem, right. why it's a problem, stuff like right. that, you get them engaged. That's, you, that's the way it works. My hospital, they call me the politician for a reason, you know. They, they Would you say that again, the politicians come into the hospital? No, in, the, in my hospital, in my work, they call me the politician. Oh, you are. <laughs> I get it. Yes, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, you know. Tell me about. Uh, so you have four kids, right? Yeah. And because uh, I noticed in your Twitter profile, you're holding a baby. I'm assuming that's one of your one of your. That, kids. That's that's my the, my little daughter. Yeah, the, the baby. Yeah. That's the last one. I'm not gonna have no more kids. You know. No more. <laughs> uh, things are not easy. Is yeah. that this is my third marriage? Uh, my first marriage. I got my daughter. She's 20, 21 year old right now. She's gonna be twenty two soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's studying, so I'm paying her, you know, child support. Mm-hmm. And uh, even though she's 21, people will think, oh, she's 21, you don't need to pay child support no more. Yeah, but she's studying. Okay. Yeah. So I need to continue to support my daughter. It's not like, oh, she's 21, you're going to let her go. And that's it. No, my daughter, I love my Which daughter. Which that should be our responsibility collectively. Correct, because she's can my I, daughter. Can, can I tell you something? This is probably, it's funny that we're talking about this because I was thinking, <laughs> I have a lot of time to think right now. And I was thinking about this again recently, just looking at people posting stuff. Oh, I know what made me think about it because the uh, the Biden plan for free community college, it's it's so it's such a pathetic you know morsel thrown at us because it has the income limits and it's something like 
if your family makes more than, I don't know if it's, I think it's like 150,000, then you don't get the free community college, which, you know, first of all, let's be real. You know, if your family's making more than that, they're probably pushing you towards already a four year institution. But let me just, so this is the thing that made me think was when I went to community college, which is how I started off in school, in college, um, I lived at home for the first two years. It wasn't the safest space for me, but it was like, I can live at home still and start college. And I didn't really have an idea. You know, you don't, no, one, no one was really guiding me. Mm -hmm. But the thing was, I was so frustrated, especially then when I transferred to the four-year school, like the FAFSA, you know, the financial aid form. And this was like back in the 90s, uh, mid 90s. So this stuff is, you know, because this goes even back further than that. But I was like the expected family contribution part when you have to put in like your, your parents' gross income. And I was like, why do I have to put that? I'm an, a freaking adult. Like they're not paying anything for me. Sure, they housed me for a few years in a space that was not like the best. But then even after that, they had nothing to do with me. They cut me off. They didn't want, they, they were like, you got to figure this out. But yet on this government form, I have to put in this like- You know why? My stepdad makes X, not, it was like $90,000. It's crazy. But you know, you know but, why is that? Well, because the government, because capitalism, because they don't want us to all take care of you. Like, this is crazy. The FAFSA, once the FAFSA, that's what happened to me. Once the FAFSA runs out, what do you need to continue doing? Uh, apply for what? Apply for what? Scholarships or? Student loans. Student loans. Right? Well, no, no. So that's what, no, that's what I'm saying. The FAFSA form determines then your loan package. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So like, so they're basically saying you can only get because your parents make this amount of money this is the loan you can get and yeah. I, I you, and, you, and you don't get any like scholarships or any other financial aid and you don't you know Pell Grants nothing so I my parents made this much money they weren't giving me a dime of it but yet I had to go to college in poverty and I remember there was one week I remember I had no food I had no food being there on that and I had too much pride. And I remember sitting in the lobby, I was a theater student. So I was in the lobby of the theater and there was someone who had like a Subway sub and they were only gonna eat maybe half of it or something like that. And they looked around, we were just like a group of us there. Like, does anyone want this? I was starving. I had, I don't even know I, if at that day, if I had eaten anything, I had maybe a couple things that week that I was like chips or I, whatever. And I had so much pride like, I didn't want to admit that I was starving, that mm -hmm. I passed up a whole half a sub, which would have at least got me through the day. But I had no, no, no family support, no connection. But so my, so what I got for support from our government, which was all loans. So it's stuff I was supposed to pay back, which I never forget that. But that was the thing. Like, so there was no money. There was no extra buffer for things like food. And it was the sick, it was just such a sick experience. That was the first time I think in my life that I was like, this doesn't make sense. That's of course, when the now, ball hit you. Yeah, but now, yeah. and then of course it was, you know, probably only a handful of years ago that I, all the pieces Listen. really started to fall. I mean, the pieces continue to fall into place. Let's put it that way. Like I'm learning new things every day about how broken the system is. Yeah, when I went to university, I went through something very similar to you. It wasn't about food. It was about transportation. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't have a car. I was dependent on the uh, public transport transportation. I was working. I was studying full-time both. And uh, one night, I didn't have enough money to buy a bus pass. Mm. You know what happened? I got out from my university at 12 o'clock midnight, and I needed to walk five miles to my home during winter. So yeah, I understand where you where where you going from, you know. So I know how hard it is, and uh, that's why we need to change the system. Yeah, it can't stay this way. It can't. It can't. You know, if you allow people to go to college, what is gonna happen? Okay, we need to relate this with something else. If you allow to regular people to go to college, they're gonna get prepared for better jobs, right? But the problem is when you send people to college, regular people to college, they get smarter, they get better, they understand better the situation, they get, they become critical thinkers, right? Yes, yes. What Hopefully, happens yes. With, a, with a capitalistic system that doesn't work and you get people with low budgets, you lo you with low income, becoming critical thinkings of, of the system? What happens? Well, 
Well, I, don't, I'm, I have a hopeful thought, but will you tell me what you think? <laughs> what happens is people are going to do what? Well, revolts in a yeah. smart way. What is happening right now? All this student debt, why do we have so much student debt? Because you have a lot of students with student debt yeah. that are thinking. That's why they becoming socialists. Yeah. That's why they hate students. That's why they hate when students revolt. Yeah. You know, they make it look like it's something more bad, something worse, that, oh, they're doing this. No, 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 no. They're revolting because the system doesn't work. Right. It's oppressing them. You know, it's, it's, it's oppressing them. It's making them uncomfortable. It's making their life miserable. So we, yeah. need, we need to change the system. It doesn't work, period. And the way we do it is by uniting the way we're doing it right now. We're talking about this. We're letting people know about these problems. You know, what is my problem? What is your problem? How do you feel? You know, all right. that stuff. My, my wife right now, she went uh, through a lot of mental, you know, situations with the, with the bills. You know, every time she sees bills, she becomes crazy and it affects my, matri- my, 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 my house. You know, it affects our relationship. It is something that affects you. Even though you don't see it, I might look like I'm happy all the time. I have making jokes and putting memes online, stuff like that. But sometimes I'm really, really pissed, you know, what is happening. What if we got together as one of the actions that we take and we have a mass bill burning parties? Like in the in the middle of each neighborhood, everyone gets together, just brings all their bills and just burns them. And we all stop but paying all our bills. This is the what would happen? Problem. I don't know. What do you think would happen if we Yeah, it might work, but this is what yeah. happens. People are so busy with their lives. You know? so, yeah. The party that we will okay, try to busy. build, you know, will have a hard time. Like the Green Party right now, they have a hard time. You know why they have a hard time? Because corporate media blackout yeah. and people don't have time to do nothing for them. They're, they're busy so running they around. Work. Yeah. People yeah. need to work, you know. It's not easy. The same is going to happen with the people's party. The same is going to happen with any other party from the people that is going to start from the grassroots, you know. Yeah. If, you, if the people don't have the, the money or the time, you know, it's going to be hard because then you have these two oligarchy parties, you know, suppressing them. So it makes me think them. of like the concept of a general strike and like how to build the momentum and support. I think it's needed. Because it's if we can people. build, you know, I was listening to a podcast today, there's Ron, Ron Pocone and mm-hmm. um, a guy he had on there who was talking about some of the mutual aid, you know, the, the focus of mutual aid, not just being like feeding your neighbors, but, you know, educating people as you're feeding your neighbors and creating neighborhood pods of support. And, and I've been saying that since the beginning of this crisis to people, like really start pulling together with your neighbors like literally where you lived, because you're going to need that to defend people from losing their houses and, yeah. and apartments and, and then literally like growing food together and doing what you can to literally on the micro level, especially while we're still isolated like this, to just do that and get to know your neighbors, protect your neighbors and realize that that's you know, going to be a huge piece of what's going to be, be needed moving forward. And then from that place, you know, that can be built into other things. And what a wonderful experience to be able to actually get to know your neighbors. Yeah, you know? no, that's true. That's true. The only problem we have right now is the COVID-19. Well, but I'm saying like, you know, you, just, you do the protection and stuff as you need to. Yeah. But you build those lo- little, like literally on your own street. To tell you the truth, you know why I haven't yeah. organized over here that much? Even though I went campusing from Bernie, all that stuff, we yeah. know what we could. I haven't organized that much over here because I'm afraid that I'm going to bring something home. Of course. Well, of course. I totally. have little kids. You totally, know, totally, if it was totally. only me, oh, I would be in the street doing crazy yeah. stuff. I would be with Antifa. I would be with all yeah. those groups. Yeah. But the problem is I don't want to bring nothing to my little kids. You know, they're, they're, it's not their fault that daddy wants, you know, it's not their fault that daddy will expose them something like that. Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah. Now, so, are you, are you in, have you already received the vaccine? Not yet, because the vaccine they're giving my my work is the uh, Pfizer. Okay. And for me, that vaccine is kind of a little bit riskier. I would prefer the Moderna one because it has to be stored in a less, you know, chilling environment, you know, and stuff like that. Oh, so I, right. I believe it's more and more, less, it's less risky. Are they going to get the Moderna vaccine? Uh, if they're going to give it, I'll take it. Okay, I see. but for now it's a Pfizer one, and, uh, and they're not requiring you to take it at this point. No, no, no. Okay. It's it's not mandated. Okay. It's not mandated. Even though they try, you know, to make you take it, they they tell you know they explain to you why you should take it. Yeah. But all the people that have taken it, you know, the second shot is a yeah. problem. 
Oh, really? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't want to let you know the details because you know he's. Yeah, well, that's know. what I don't want to say anything about vaccines on this video because. Yeah, exactly. I don't want you. I to am get, not you know, anti-vaccine, but yeah, I also recognize that it's a I'm fast not. rollout, and so I have concerns myself. So I want to make I, I sure. Prefer, you know, I, would I want to do it right. Give you the options of three different vaccines. You know, they put them over there. Which one would you like to take? Oh, so perfect. I want the Moderna one. Right. Because you're because there are differences between some of them that exactly. at least in the reporting that I've read and see this is also part of our this is what drives me nuts too is like because we don't have an effective like journalistic apparatus in this country outside of like some you know smaller independent folks you, we're not it's it's so hard to actually truly ascertain the facts on things that are literally life or death like which yeah. vaccine is the best vaccine for me to have. You know, vaccine is vaccine. It will help you prevent the sure. virus. Uh, absolutely. It's going to reduce the, it's going to do all that stuff. But there are nuances that I think are, yeah. like you're saying, this, it's important. It's really important. Yeah. Some people get really sore for a whole day. You know, I don't want to have that happening to me because I need to keep my, feeding my family. You know, I don't want to be, you know, absent. Well, it's like, can you afford a day even off at that point? You know, yeah. that's crazy. That's what's so crazy too, is like literally to get out of this crisis, we need everyone to stay as healthy as possible which means we need people to like not have to choose between things like working and getting a vaccine that may take a day away from my work. And am I going to be covered for that? Yeah. Or if I got home, like taking care of your kids, like, can I afford right now to have that energy reduction on that specific? So I could see like where you, like the, all the calculus comes in with all of that. Exactly. exactly. And you're trying to just, and that's, so that's another part of that insanity. Like we were talking about. But it's, it's not that I'm anti-vaxxer because I'm right. not. All my right. kids have all the vaccinations, you know, Absolutely. I always prevent them from getting any kind of sickness and stuff like that. But in this, you know, this one was so, you know, there's like a couple of corporations behind and stuff like that. So I just want to make sure I'm taking the right one. The one that I really want. My, yeah me choosing the right one, not them telling me which one I'm going to take. You understand what I mean? I hear you. My situation is, um, so I have a letter from my one barely employer because work has been cut down to like, I've been mostly on unemployment this whole year, 99% unemployment. Yeah. Um, and so as an educator, um, I have a letter that I can take to get it. But since I'm so isolated right now, Cause I'm not, I was working in New York city and then, you know, I basically became homeless actually before the pandemic. So things tumbled and, you know, then now I'm upstate. So I'm like three hours away from the city, completely in the woods and isolated. So my, the, the what I've been thinking lately is because I'm seeing the shortages of vaccine happening. I mean, I'm one person, but I'm so isolated and so careful even though I have some underlying health conditions and I have no health insurance, my mind is in the place of saying, let me just wait just a little bit because I would like to hope that our government will at some point have enough vaccine for anyone who's ready to go to get it. Yeah. Yeah, Why I should it. I take a vaccine before someone who I know right now desperately needs it. Yeah, like elderly people and stuff. Elderly like that. people, yeah, people living in close proximity to others, people who yeah. have are like yourself outside the home working. Like, so I'm just like, all right, I, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the ramp up. It's not happening. And we keep telling, we keep, you know, the government, this new administration keeps saying, be patient. I'm like patient for what? I have no more patience. I haven't had patience for a decade of my life. There's no more patience left, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's sick. It's really sick. But now I'm going to get angry again. So I better stop. <laughs> so it's good sometimes to vent it out. You know, ah, I, I do it all the time. Though, that's the thing. But I saw, it sounds like you probably do too. <laughs> I'll do it too. Oh, forget it. Hey, we're humans, man. We're humans. We're going through a lot. It's not easy. It's true. It's true. You know, going back to the uh, student stuff that we were talking about, I was going to let you know that, you know, they, they, you were telling me that they were basing your dad and your mom's income on yeah. the FAFSA, right? Yeah. What if your mom and your dad also had three jobs in order to pay their bills? Yeah. So you're going to undercut them because, you know, your son, their son wants to go to university to get a better job, better job, which I right. don't have, you know? Well, it's the expectation too. Like it's just this assumption that your family is going to help you through college. Mm -hmm. And where the hell did that assumption ever come from? Yeah. It's not real. That's that's a lie. 
And I know the problem is the salaries, right? Not right. the minimum wage. What is and the, I, and the thing is, I don't want, I don't, no one should have to have their parents help them through college. Like, this is a collect, this, the other, so the bigger picture is like, what kind of society do we want? Do we want a society where no one knows anything? Like, is that really what we want? We want where no one knows uh, anything think, and we don't know how to do anything. I'm not saying think, that college does that, but like trade school and college and any type of like advanced education. I don't care what it is. That's our collective that's responsibility. I don't want to go to a, my yeah, car mechanic and they've never studied how to be a car mechanic because they can't afford it. You know what I mean? That's my responsibility yeah. along with theirs and everyone yeah. else to make sure that we have car mechanics. Yeah. That are you know certified, however they need to be to do their job. That's where tuition free colleges come in, you know. I, and, and that's where the other part of it is like it shouldn't just be focusing on college, because to be honest, I got two college degrees, and where it's is called that education. Gotten, you know, it should be education to the point of you doing the thing that is meaningful for you to do in the world. Because honestly, yeah. like as a teacher, I can go into a classroom of thirty people, which is a ridiculous number of people to teach at one time. So I believe the ratio should be much smaller. Being there done that. So I know. If it's an average, yeah, so yeah, exactly. So if it's an average group of people, 30 human beings, you're going to have a mechanic in that room. You're going to have a doctor. You're going to have a scientist. You're going to have a nurse. You're going to have uh, math. You know, you're going to have everything. You're going to have an artist, a uh, performer. You're going to, it's always the case. I've never walked into a classroom and I've taught in probably thousands of classrooms, I don't know, maybe hundreds of classrooms over many, many years, I can, because because as a theater artist, you go in and you're doing projects that incorporate all those different parts of the brain. So I see right away, immediately, the different types of learners. And it's always the same. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and so it's, so to me, it's like, we're, we're totally missing the mark with all of this stuff where it's like, I don't have to try to figure out how many doctors I need. I just need to make sure that in every classroom, the doctor that's already there is supported and can become a doctor, you know, yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. or, or the this or the that, or whatever we need in society to actually thrive. And I, uh, another thing I don't like is that the school system over here, uh, they base everything about testing, you know, those, oh, yes. those tests, uh, oh, yes. state mandated tests, federal tests, you know, not all kids have the same, you know, they don't shine in the same areas. Well, the some test only tests like certain math. things, you know. Yeah, some kids don't like math, but they like, right. you know, literature. Some kids don't like science, but they do like math, math, you know. Some kids are very good at becoming an artist, you know. If you put them in the stage, oh, my God, it can be something that people will say, wow, look at this kid, you know. Mm -hmm. Why not focus, make some testing that will make you understand what are their strong areas, yes. you know and focus on that, you know, give them the opportunity of becoming somebody that is going to be good for the society. Right. Do In not a way that works for them. them. Yes. Yeah. The, frustrate if, them with math or stuff like that that they might not like. I totally, so, so that's exactly what I'm saying. That any type of assessment should only really be seen through the lens of, I think two lenses. One, exactly what you just said. What does, what is, what is this person, child, you know, what are they drawn to? Uh -huh, uh -huh. How can we provide stuff for them to, and like the full support for them in that way? And maybe it works and maybe they get drawn in a different direction. That's fine. But we're constantly like providing the resources for them. Yeah. And then the other thing would be like, what are the things that every human needs to know to function? Like basic yeah. things like tying your shoes as long as we have shoelaces or... Yeah. You know, the, just whatever these things are in, in the world that are part of just being a human, not being a human in any specific system, but like regardless, you know, and then like, and that's it. Like that, that's the only reason there should be, in my view, like a testing system for anything because yeah. everything else, the amount of wasted time. And I see this with full-time teachers when I go into classrooms and, you know, the, the burnout rate and the amount of stress and some of them manage it superbly. I don't know how. And, and some of them, maybe they're just bented that way for certain things and they can handle that. But there's so many teachers that are just like, it's, you just see the exasperation every day, you yeah. know? Yeah. And it's like, it's so cruel to them when, and then it becomes all about paperwork and bureaucracy on them. And, and it's just like, this isn't teaching anymore. Correct. You know? Correct. It's like, like 
you know, making them do what the system wants them to do instead of allowing them to become what they can become, you know? Exactly. Yeah, I understand. I went through all that with the kids, you know. There's also frustrations at home. It's not just the school. It happens with the, the uncles and the, the, the sisters, you know, stuff like that also, you know. Mm -hmm. And most of that comes to um, income. Yeah. Income. And most how of much the time, the main problem is that the parents don't have enough income and they need to work two jobs in order to, you know, keep the, the ceiling on top of their heads. Never mind provide for tutoring if there's that needed. Right. All these other things that, again, are being thrust upon us as opposed to us collectively doing this. Correct. And Correct. yeah, totally. Yeah, I saw that during my 10 years of being in the, the education system. And I relate to you. You know, I know what you mean. And it's true. It's true. People yeah. don't see it because, oh, another problem I have is all these boards in the school, they are appointed. They're not people that have been working in the schools. How yes. the heck they know what the school need when you haven't even been in the school system? Oh, because it's the friend of the mayor, because it's the friend of so-so, you know, you're gonna appoint them in the board and a board that is so important for the future. Really? They need to get rid of that. They need to do a, a you know, they need to make it a, a voting. You know, people vote for them, the, the community voting for the board. Well, and there needs to be some sort of structure now where the, every, the power is localized. So, yeah. and, and in, not in a way where like, as we've seen in this nation where then people can be discriminated against or whatever, but like there needs to be local accountability. So that way, like if I'm a member of a board uh, or some sort of like lawmaking body or rules making body, I have to take what I'm doing back to the community. And it's not like, and it's like maybe there's like a council of people in the neighborhood. Again, I'm coming back to that micro. Oh, no. like, and it's they ha and I have to live in that neighborhood with those people so that I might be that I'll be voting on something. So like they have to approve what I'm going to vote on. So I'm just a vessel, which yeah. obviously we all we don't even need that anymore because we have blockchain technology and we have lots of different things where we can do direct democracy. We just haven't been doing it, you know, True. where we could just have people coming together and be like, what do we need? Oh. We need, it, we need that pothole fix this month. All right, we're going to vote on that money for that pothole. Boom, done. You know, like yeah. literally people in their own lives making the decisions. Yeah. And the, the government's just the vessel to shovel the money back and forth and then and to organize the, the larger system. Yeah, hey, and those decisions are going to help, you know, build the community. We have to. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. And I know there's probably other models and other things. I mean, these are just some of the things that I've been thinking about lately. And just like, it's, it's not a question of anymore of like, can we do this? It's like, no, we have to do this. And I think like, for me, I've been moving in the direction of being like, no, 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 we just got to do it. How do we get there? Okay, there's lots of things, lots of entry points, lots of actions and things that people can take. Yeah. And groups that are forming now and that have been growing and, you know, and some of this stuff will grow and shrink and grow, and shrink, but that's movement. That's social movement. That's how it has. That's, that's how it works. That's how that's it how works. So get in, you know, get in, get into something, get involved. Like the door, like the Bernie stuff, I was doing that. I was doing a lot of door knocking and phone banking for him. And, and I chose to do it this last cycle because I noticed some of the tools that they were providing to people that were like organizer tools. That and I was like, oh. He's in the bus uh, one. Remember that one, the app? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that yes. app was amazing. It helped me a lot when I was yep. canvassing. And it's, the it's, map, you have everything. All the the minivan, the minivan app, right? Oh my, yeah, the minivan. minivan. Yes. And I loved it. And that teaches people those skills that they need to organize to do the real work that obviously our government's just not going to do for us. Yeah. So we yeah. have to do that, build up the systems parallel to our existing government to make our government obsolete, which is a her Herculean task. I mean, this yeah. is not any small yeah. feet, but that's why I was like, oh no, I'll do this stuff. Cause I've done a lot of organizing throughout my life. And I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll give some time to this. Cause I was unemployed partly back then too. And I was like, afraid I was like, we need to beat Trump. We do need to beat Trump, you know? And I, and I was like, okay, I'll do it be, in part because of those things, but really also because it's teaching people how to organize. So I was yeah. glad that that was a part of the campaign. Hey, I met so many beautiful people. Oh, me was, too. You know, me in the too. Bernie's, uh, in their uh, barn, uh, storm barn, and you know, stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh my God, canvassing. I met so many good people. I met uh, elder, elder men over here from Chicago. 
that were for Bernie. You know, I took pictures with her, with them. I met so many beautiful people that I was amazed. I was like, wow, this is what is for me, you know. Yes. If if if, if only the establishment establishment allowed Bernie to you know become president just for one term. Yeah, but they don't want to. They don't want. They don't want us to to, to you know to witness what a government like that will be. They don't want us to feel it. They don't want to, you know, they don't want us to be involved in that. Yeah. Because once so you sad, feel it, sad. once people feel it, there's no going back for that person. Correct. Correct. Once and they, they feel it. what life could be like. They know it. You know, exactly. But I met so many different cultures. You know, I met, I met uh, Arab people. They were amazing. Those people, they gave me tea. They made me feel very comfortable at home when I was talking to them. You know, I met Hispanic people like me. I met Asian people. I met so many beautiful people, African-Americans that were amazing. Voices that I'm like, like Nina Turner, you know, voices that were amazing. Mm -hmm. Even though I didn't met her, because every time that she was in the, in the, in the, uh, in the, in the um, Bernie stuff, I was not able to go over there because I needed to work. Yes, of course. You know, that's one of the main reasons. I'm pretty sure there were going to be a lot more people in those uh, events. A lot more people, but they needed to work just like me. Yeah. I have a family to feed. You know, I have a ceiling to keep on my head. Yep, 100%. Uh, man, when he came over here to Chicago, I was like, I was so heartbroken. I could not go over there, man. Oh, you were working when he did the rally there? Yeah. Oh. I, I was doing my two jobs because by that mm. time, the pandemic was not here. So I had oh, part-time, yeah. my part-time and my full-time. So, yeah. Yeah. But it's, it is what it is. You know, we continue doing, you know, we, we continue to try to make the system work for us, for 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 Ameri for the American people, not for the establishment. That's the thing. They already it's have their money. They already, ha already yes. have their stuff. It's us. We are the ones that need to fight for for ourselves. Absolutely. You know, you know I went um, uh, with my boyfriend at the time. I asked him to go with me to the Queens rally, the one after his heart attack. That, that rally was amazing. And I said, I said, this is my birthday gift from you to me. Let's go. <laughs> 24,000 people were attended, right? It was like 26,000. We showed up, you know, we came in as like some of the, uh, the people were speaking, like Michael Moore, I think was speaking at the time. And, but the moment, and the one that's, you know, indelible is like uh, the video of the take a look around, the one that's on the t-shirt, take a look around, find someone you don't know. Are you willing to fight for that person you don't know as hard as you're willing to fight for yourself and that moment i've never heard a politician say that now i have my thoughts about bernie now um yeah, no. and how he's failed us but but ah. that moment sat with me and i did the thing and it reminded me of being in church when i was growing up you know and like you the, the whole peace be with you and all of that and to think of that sense of spirituality in our society as a as an actual tenant like i'm literally going to fight for a stranger as hard as i would fight for myself and to be like well of course and i looked around and i looked at like two or three different people across the whole you know expanse of people and it was silent and we're all doing it and 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 the other thing about that rally was that like everything that was being said from the stage was just like uh-huh uh-huh and it, it was like uh-huh uh-huh and you don't get that in your everyday life like it took yeah. all of us to come together and to be validated for what we've yeah. known in our hearts to be true for the longest time like yes we all deserve universal health care yes we all deserve you know to go to college for free and our society should be picking up the tab for all of that stuff yeah. yeah yes we all deserve a home and healthy air and all and, and water and, and food and you know, meaningful work, all these things. And then I left there and I said to my boyfriend, I said, I said, I don't, I said, whatever happens after today, it, like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. This yeah. moment is a moment where things shifted in a way. And that's, and, and it sounds, that sounds so like ethereal or whatever, but, and he kind of was just at that point, like, okay, yeah. And I said, no, 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 this is, there's a moment, there's, and I feel these things in my gut and I, my gut's pretty right about these kind of social justice, social movement things yeah, usually. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's right. Like we're seeing right now because we have this new administration that doesn't give a crap about us. Of course we were right 
we were right then. We've been right for as long as we've been saying. We're always going to be right. We're always going to be right. That's never going to change. So the hey, goal listen. now is like people, other, they need to come to this place of saying, yes, yes, you are worth all of these things. And so that moment was so profound to just like leave yeah. that rally and, and realize. It this stayed was a, in your heart. That's going to stay heart. in your heart forever. Ever. And it's the, a shift. Burning, it was a, it's a shift what, that took place. What, they, what the established, establishment don't understand is that the burning movement, it was not about burning. Nothing to do with him. It Nothing was all about that. us. Yes. That's why it was not me, us. Us. You know? So what they don't understand is Bernie was, was the vehicle. Right. That drove us through the harsh, you know, the, the reality of what was happening. He yep. woke us up. So he planted the seeds that are now flourishing. Us. Right. And they, and they try to us. shepherd us into the Democratic Party. No, and that that nonsense. Gonna happen. And that doesn't that happen. That's not going to happen. Ain't and that's what they, and I think that that's what they're genuinely afraid of, as they should be. Because it's, yeah. it's not gone. We're not gone. You might have killed 500,000 Americans in the past year, but we're still here. Those of us who are still here, and we're, hey, we're, and they, and we're the more furious. And the new generation is coming, too. Say that again? The new generation is coming, Yes. Too. And they're not having any of this shit. Yeah. I love the way that they talk online because they don't give yeah. a shit. <laughs> it's awesome. And that's yeah. it. And yet that energy and that action, like I've seen the actions, you know, as things have increased over the past year in the middle of a freaking pandemic, it's, it's, that, that's the, that is the only thing that gives me hope is when people are doing the thing, doing the actions, pushing the system, pressuring the system. And that's it. Like, if we can keep that up, and I think we will, and I think it's about to of get even we more intense. We're, ne we're never backing down. We're ne we don't back this. You can't kill that. No. So that's the part where I get hope. You know, where we go from that, and this was like going back to the rally where I was like, I don't know where we'll end up, but well, I know things are shifting, and this was a mm -hmm. moment in that mm -hmm. shift. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so, like, I see... And like, more, more organizations are getting together. That's another thing, you know. The DSA, you know, a lot of, even though they have their issues too, you know, but no organization is perfect. None. You have different people, different ways of thinking, you know, you gotta, you're going to have a lot of problems. It's going to happen. But if they focus on the problem, the main problem of our society over here, which is Medicare for all, which is universal baking, basic income. I like that one from Andrew Jang. Even, even though I wasn't an Andrew Jang supporter, Right. I like that from him. He brought that to the table. We were not thinking about that, not even Bernie. No. You know, he brought that to the table. That was great. Universal basic income, uh, tuition free colleges. You know, we need all that in our society. And that ain't going to go away. It's going to stay in our minds forever. And we're going to keep on spreading it. It's going to become so big that the establishment ain't going to be able to stop us. Right. That ain't going to happen. If you join the movies, Movement for a People's Party, if you, I, I'm part of the Green Party. You know it. I have it on my bio. Mm -hmm. I'm not moving back. I'm not voting anymore for the Democratic establishment. My first vote was for Obama when I moved over here in 2010, the first term. He got me once. He got me twice. That's it. Yeah. Then Bernie made me vote for Hillary Clinton. Hmm. I didn't want to vote for her. He made me wow. vote for her. But this cycle around, I say, eh, eh, I am falling for this again. Yeah. So I voted for another. I voted green. You know, I don't want to deal with it. I, my hands are, are clean. I didn't vote for this administration. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know who Chris Hedges is. Chris yes. Hedges. Oh, yeah. He said it very clearly. Neoliberalism is going to bring faces, fresh fascism. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen. Well, again. it's happening. It's happening. Look it's what is happening right happening. now. Who it's is Joe Biden happening. appointing for such important cabinet positions? I know. And it's not and funny. Then, and then we got Bernie agreeing with him? That's the part that I, just... It's I like, am so sad, man. I am so sad. I am so... Well, I will not, say another word, but I won't say it over here. But, but no one, I think the point that I hear in that is no one is coming to save us. No one is ever coming to save us. That never is the case. Us. It's only us. We can push the system or create a new system and or do all of it, but it has to be us. It can it only be us. us and not just you and I, us, but like the us is everyone needs to step in and do something and do their part. And the thing, like what you were saying, we were talking about earlier, I think what people don't realize because they're so enculturated to living in this society in a certain way 
mm-hmm. and having a certain set of like airs about them or whatever. Like when you do that, when you come together with other people and you push a system or create a new system or whatever, and it's built horizontally. So there's like, no one's leading the thing, but everyone has their own piece of it and their own role. You don't, there is no sense of community outside of that. Everything else is a facade. And that's why you have so many problems that people will be like, Oh, I'm working on, I'm on the school board with this person and I hate them. And then all this other stuff, all that shit goes away. You still have conflict, but you have solidarity and you're together in a different way. And you find different ways to communicate, to work through differences because you yeah. have to. Hey, you don't have uh, a choice. Another thing that I don't believe in is in the cancel culture. You know, this, oh, I'm going to block yes. you because I, I think differently than you. And it's happening a lot in the left. Well, left. Let me well, call it that way. Left. Whatever that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it is happening a lot right now. What is it with this cancel culture? Why we need to, you know, cancel each other? Why we need to block? Why we need to, you know, when somebody is very abusive, I understand that you might get frustrated, but Twitter has a tool called the mute button. Don't cancel it. Mute him for a couple of days. If it's become or her, you know, if it's becoming annoying, just mute him for a couple of days. And, you know, keep going with your life. Keep going posting. Well, and if they're abusive, I mean, that's where, you know, this brings in the whole argument of, like, should we regulate these platforms? Are there different models no. of platforms that we should move to that, that, that minimize that kind of stuff from even happening? And Because uh, these platforms, obviously, they teach us, they, they form us into communicating in certain ways as well. And they're populated with a bunch of corporate bots and nefarious actors. Yeah. And you can go on a profile and see they're following zero people. They're... Or, or there's one person following them, but it's another account that also has no the one person fall. And it's like this whole network yeah. that is it's a you know it's a dark network of uh, bots, and that gins people up, you know. And so like you can get rid of all that, but in that system, Twitter, for instance, which is in capitalism, it's structured in that way where it's all about making money. It's not then, about building community, which is but, a completely different model. But then when regular people learn how to exploit that system and use it in their advantage. They yeah, but I think that, I, I honestly think that like most of that stuff isn't regular people doing that. I really think, I started looking into this, like there, I, when you see so many of these comments, go to their, go to their profile and just look at how many people they're following and who they're following. That's what I do all the time, yeah. And I actually recently just did this. I, I went to a few like higher profile, you know, like, quote unquote progressives and regardless of where they sat on the spectrum of thought um their pot their their followers it's like tons of these bots mm. and and you know and I, we've seen this on facebook and, and actually on facebook let me tell you something i noticed a couple of years ago um were you part I, of the burning groups in facebook i was i was and some of them yeah yeah, yeah i was some, an administrator and in, a couple like three of them they were fun until they weren't. I'll tell yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. when they, when they until they got fighting, corrupted and taken over by like really shitty people or these yeah. these yeah. infiltrators. I mean, movements. Yeah. People understand. Have to, I think we have to really understand now too. Like, and I think online has been a good training ground for this. Movements will always have infiltrators. Yeah. Whether it's bo- a bot network that some corporation hires or whatever. Um, or individual actors or whatever. There's always people trying to infiltrate movement. So it's really good to like know these types of things are happening. The thing on Facebook that I found fascinating was I, I started seeing some of these weird comments and then it would go on the Facebook profile and it's, it would be the same thing. They'd have like a handful of Facebook friends. And a lot of these would have like Snapchat filter profile pictures. Like, you know. Yeah, like, you know, it's fake. And then you'd see like the posting of just, like old pictures from the 80s or 90s or whatever on the profile. And people would be like doing the pretty lady thing, which I saw today on, on something that was posted. Oh, what a pretty lady. And then you're like, this lady is pretty. And it's just fake. But this is the part that was really scary that I saw. Also on these profiles were Facebook fundraiser pages. Help so-and-so Ooh. make, help so-and-so raise money for their whatever or help for this organization. And some of it was legit and some of it wasn't. And then what I would see is other Facebook friends of mine that I know to be real human beings. Will fall for them. 
who had given money to this. So now I'm like, how much money is being skimmed and scammed out of people on Facebook for fake causes from these bot profiles? Yeah. That was like pretty eye open. I have not, uh, this is the first time I've really talked about it. I mean, I've talked about it with friends and stuff, but like that, so there's so much that's going on right now with this yeah. stuff and has been, probably, you know, obviously for a very long time, but yeah. it's weird. Like when you realize that these ecosystems are just like dumpster fires and here we are in those spaces trying to do something to like capture people's attention. Real are, people. Real, real people. people. So it's like, yeah. they understand too. Like, hey, no, 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 don't come in here and then go over that crazy direction because that is literally manufacturing you to go to a place that is not real. Like the reality is this hour long conversation that you and I just had. This yeah. is the real world, you know? Yeah. Yeah, our real problems. These are the real problems. So all this other stuff that's like, and I'm not, I'm not talking about censorship. I'm not talking about any of that, like canceling or anything. I'm saying, you know, there's so much going on in these spaces that, especially for people that might be newly trying to engage, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. And so that's why. So I don't. Have you heard of Panquake? Yeah, yeah. So I I'm excited to see what that up, might be. You know, yeah, yeah they have a couple of good features. I have, I'm following them. And I'm following, I think it's their creator, which is a lady. I forgot her name. Susie. Yeah. Yeah. Lawson, yeah. I think. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hopeful her, for that know. kind of a network. Another thing is I'm trying to migrate from YouTube. I'm trying to watch more videos in Rockfin. Yes. And Odyssey, I need to do that. You know, and yep. stuff like that. Odyssey and Rockfin. I'm trying to migrate. Yeah. I don't want to give Google no more power. Yeah. They're done with me. Even though sometimes I might be watching YouTube, I'm blocking all their ads. Good for you. I have an ad blocker. I have two ad blockers. Forget it. Even in Android, I'm blocking their ads. I'm not gonna give them money. How, are you blocking? How are you blocking the ads on the videos themselves, or like all yeah. the ads? How do you oh, do that? Yeah. On, yeah. Then, really? Yeah. Forget I didn't know it. this thing's a thing. Wow. Yeah. So I'm blocking them. Even in Android, I found the way of Android because Google is very picky about Android. They don't allow any ad blocking software to be in their store. That will be attached to their Google Chrome uh, browser. Oh, or or their their app. So they don't allow that in their phones. They they you have it all over there for the computers and stuff. So what I did, I found a browser that allows me to put those ad uh, apps in the browser. You know, it's extensions. It's called extensions. Oh, so I'm using those extensions. I don't watch any ads from Google. I'm done with them. That's I used awesome. to support them, not anymore. Since they started with the censorship thing, you saw what they did. I don't know if you follow the combo couch. I, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, so they got demonetized. I saw that, yeah. Nico House, yes. I, I wasn't a big fan of him because he, he was a Tulsi Gabber guy. Mm -hmm. But now he's speaking better than before. He woke up, you know, stuff like that. So following him to see what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He got demonetized. A new guy that got a couple of months in YouTube he got demonetized too. I'm like, this is a crackdown. Oh, total crackdown. And you know, it was. I'm, I'm not gonna support this. That's it. I'm done with you. Yeah, I, 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 I'm the same way. I, it's, I've been looking for the off ramp. I think you've encouraged me to accelerate that. <laughs> the only, the only I thing I fear is that Rockfin or Odyssey, they're gonna build this huge base, and then Google is gonna go what? Well, they're not. So there's some good interviews that um, Susie has done that talks about their technology. It's blockchain. Um, it's not served. It's not on servers in the U.S. Oh, good. So they're oh. they're not part of the Amazon, you know, good. cabal. Yeah. So that, they're that. they're more protected, and unless the government tries to change things, which I mean, you know, hello, of course, the big tech is in bed with the Bidens. Yeah. You know, we'll see what happens there. But I don't know. It sounds like they're that's like they're. They're as protected as you possibly can be with what they're creating, which sounds Most great. And I think the, the engagement model will be much easier to engage in and be able to amplify people and be a part of like, because the thing is, and I noticed this with Slack and Signal um, and these other apps where people are organizing, there's the so much that they value. From the Amazon uh, servers. What was the name? Uh, Parlor? Parlor? Oh, well, that, that, but that's the thing. So uh, Panquake is going to be a different type of system altogether. And it won't be, it's not something that they'll be able to just, these private companies will be able to shut down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's, there's definitely going to be layers of accountability, you know, obviously illegal things cannot be on there, you know, Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and the community, I forgot how she worded this, but there's, um, and, and for anyone who's watching this, I'll put in the below some links to some videos that she's done ex that explains this about how the community will be able to kind of 
I don't want to say police itself, but like be able to be like accountability to other people. There'll be awareness. There'll be, there's gonna, awareness there'll be some layers. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, want, I can't clear. I, I, that's the part that I'm not so clear on. But you know, I, I there's something just because I'm very curious because this is one of the reasons I'm doing these <laughs> these conversations. Yeah. So when you watch YouTube, I was well. How long have you had the ad blockers on? Uh, I would say it's since YouTube started being with their chicken shenanigans. Oh, so you wouldn't okay. know. It's been a while that I've been using them, but I unlocked them from certain videos, you know, from the people that I want to support. But since they've been demonetized, I'm using it for all of them. I don't care anymore. Got it. So uh, here's my here's my question, though, because this is and maybe this will be for other people who might watch this video. and Maybe they can help help me figure this out. Mm -hmm. um, so lately, the ads that I see on YouTube, it's like a cycle of like four different ads or something like that. I see the St. Jude's ads for the St. Jude's Children's Hospital, which um, I'm pretty sure were like staunch, like the heads of that hospital were staunch, like Trumpers who, and, and, you know, and the hospital, the whole medical system is corrupt. And so, or the, the financing of it. So my guess yeah, is the that- the Democrats are behind it too, so. Well, yes, ex well, yeah, ex absolutely. I'm, I'm thinking of that specific hospital if my memory serves it correctly. And so like when every time I see a St. Jude ad come on, I think they're using a kid with cancer to fund an executive at a hospital, mm -hmm. you know, which is sick because um, those people make bazillions of dollars. Um, so they're literally, you know, using kids as, with cancer as a shield. Yeah. So I see, I see that as my YouTube ads. The, the other one that I can think of that I see all the time and it drives me nuts is this um, soap thing. And it starts oh. out, it's like, you're a man. Yeah. <laughs> and, <I'm> like, <laughs> and it's like one of these like 17,000 minute video. Like this is a freaking ad. I'm not buying your dumb soap. Video? Is that video from the 90s? It sounds <laughs> like it. It looks like it. I'm like, I'm, I don't want another this. Oh, and the third one is those damn, it's the worst in the world, those Liberty Mutual. I'm like, I'll never. Oh, no, I hate those. I freaking oh, hate, I hate It's those. so great. And I'm like, what are you doing to us? And it's I like those, on a cycle, these three. I think because they know who I am, they probably want to drive ones, me nuts. The ones I hate the most are the ones they're targeting, the senior citizens that have Medicaid, the Medicare. Oh, I think I've seen these. Yeah, the, uh, the uh, health insurance companies wants to manage their Medicare. Jesus Christ. That, wh how, why the government is allowing this to happen? I know. I know. Why, why do we need a private company for profit to manage our senior citizens' mm -hmm. Medicare program? I hate that. I yeah. hate it. For me, that's very predatory, I, I would say. 100%. I saw yeah. one of those. Actually, so that was that's why I'm like, uh-huh. I literally saw one of those recently and it was shocking. I was like, what the hell is no, what is that? Yeah, yeah, they're targeting senior it's citizens. Insanity. They are naive. Most of them have dementia. Stop biting. Um, dementia, well, you know, stuff but that's like what that, they're you know? preying on. They they're they, this is how this works too, right? So they're praying, they know that certain people it is sad are in that space, you know. It is sad. And, so man. those companies with those ads are the ones mandating youtube to demonetize the channels that we liked yeah 100%. in order for us to watch that in other videos no, no no i'm done with that yeah i'm done with that no way well luis is there anything else that you want to chat about today well no you know i think we, we touched Talked most of lot. the topics that we were <laughs> we wanted to touch over here you know uh and i have my wife over there looking at me she's like it's time <laughs> yeah it's time <laughs> Yeah, I'm alone by with the kids over here. You need to help me. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I will let you but, go in. You know, I really appreciate this, you know, opportunity you give me. I you hope too. your channel, you know, grows up. Because well, I hopefully I'll get off of YouTube soon enough. We'll see what happens. Yeah, go to know. Rockfin. Go to all these. Yeah, this, this you know, use it as your main platform if you want, but try to push everybody like yeah. the Combo Couch is doing. They've been doing yeah. that. They knew. They knew was coming. They knew that was going to happen. Yeah. And they were telling people, go to rugby, go to rugby for a long time. Yeah. And now is that people are, you know, catching up with what they were saying. But yeah. I really appreciate the opportunity you gave me to being over here. You know, I appreciate always talking to other people. Me too. In uh, Twitter, I, sometimes I'm a little bit mean and stuff like that. But people didn't understand that we're going through a lot of stuff. Oh, I'm mean all the time on Twitter. And when <laughs> you see these blue shield uh, people, blue check people, you know, boot licking this establishment thing oh there's a machine they're part like, of it they're 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 the mouthpieces for it they, yeah, they I'm like oh, man, we're not the so look disgusting. we're not the we're not the mean ones on twitter we're the normal ones they're true. the mean ones true so true, there you go they call us remember the bernie bros yes oh, I was excuse me i'm a bernard bros. i'm a bernard brethren uh, yeah over here. thank you so much <laughs> so
But I really appreciate you giving me this opportunity. Same Talking here. to you was really nice. And I'll I, ask you, uh, like I said at the beginning, are you comfortable with me putting this online now that we've no, talked? Go ahead. You're, you're good? My okay. guess. All right. My right. guess. I, I have no, no problems with it. I All really right. appreciate it. I appreciate cool. it. And I hope everything goes well for you. You know, you too. If you want to do this, this in a group, you know, different, you know, you can, maybe there's a good idea that we can, all of the ones that have been talking to you, you can put them all together in a bigger Zoom call, you know, and we can talk to each other, you know, get to know each other a little I bit. I love the idea. I'll, yeah. Well, this is the second one I'm done. So we'll see. I'll get a few more done. And maybe Once we'll you get like, like 15 group. people, really cool. which I'm pretty sure you're going to get them really quick. Probably. Oh, yeah. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Know. And I'll be all for it. I love that idea. I'll work on that. Well, thank you, Alan. I really appreciate this, man. Yeah, thank you too, Luis. Thank Have you for a good your time evening. And let's keep on tweeting. <laughs> we're, we're doing it. Yeah, let's do this. All right, take See care. See you, my friend. Take care, okay? All right, bye-bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>